Welcome to Thunder Nerds. I'm Brian Hinton. I'm Janelle Pizarro. And I'm Frederick Philip Von Weiss, and you are consuming the Thunder Nerds, a conversation with the people behind the technology that love what they do and do tech good. Pow! Boom! Bah, bah, bah. Welcome, everybody. It's good to uh, have everybody watching and be back. And today we have a super special guest. I think you might have heard of this gentleman. We have designer, developer, teacher, writer, speaker, man with two arms, as Brian said earlier, Chris Coyer. Welcome to the show, sir. Hey, thanks very much. I, I get to be a, I get to be a, one of the elite return guests, huh? Yeah, <laughs> this is number three. Yeah, it's our quarterly Chris Courier update. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> That's it's what we call like, it. Is that okay? Yeah. We're going to coin that. Quarterly it's, Chris Coyer. It's kind of like yeah, the SNL, the, the Fiverr. Yeah, I mean, we, you got, we're going to send you a jacket. Club. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little Sally ah! Self Seashores by the Seashore kind of thing. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in a couple months, you'll have the quarter quarter, right? Because it'll be four, and then you're doing FEDC, Whoa. and we'll be there. I can't, I can't even think about that. That's too meta yeah, for me. Be great. <laughs> you're all going to be at in St. Pete? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all going to be at the Front End Developer Conference, and we're going to be interviewing everybody, and we're actually giving away a free ticket, too, uh, to mention if anybody wants a free ticket to the show, just give us a tweet, mention us, and... Tell us you want it, and you'll be entered. We're going to give it uh, away live on the show. So that's awesome. That's going to be super fun. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a lot of a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it's ten years. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's their ten year show, and uh, you know, uh, one one of the cool things I love about it, and the connection to you is this was the first conference, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, that you were actually invited to to speak, right? That yeah, that's right. That's why I, you know, I always have a special place in my heart for that one. And it's, you know, it was so is Dan Denny who who runs it, and I think probably still has some involvement in it, but doesn't isn't kind of the owner anymore. But who he sold it to was the the gang from Unmatched Style, and they run their own uh, uh, conferences as well. So it was kind of a you know fr friends buying a conference from friends kind of thing. It's not like it went to some corporate overlords or something. So it's still uh, kind yeah, of yeah, that's right. That way. That's right. You were originally ages ago. Uh, what was the company? Woo. Foo. Um, Woo Foo. Yeah, yeah. You, in Tampa, in Tampa, right? Uh, uh -huh. Tampa or St. Pete? I can't remember where they're based out of. So, so you did go to the St. Pete one, not because I think they have another one in another state. I can't remember where the the second. It's one all was. related. That, it's yeah. it's funny. Yeah. It's it's all yeah. you know. It's kind of a blast from the past because yeah yeah. Woo Foo was a. I, I don't know. I guess Tampa, but you know, they're, they're, you can they're just right across from each other. It's like the same city, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, I did not live there at the time. Ooh. And then because I went there though, and Kevin Hale from Wufu was speaking, I met him, and I was already kind of a Wufu super fan, and it was kind of the spark that lit the fire that had me end up working at Wufu. So look at that. That's a good reason to go to a conference. You just might get a job. Yeah, great job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. so did wow. that? Did you actually make the move then to Tampa once you got that job, or did you? I did. It remotely? was it was it was a quote unquote remote team because everybody worked from home. But but for for whatever reason, they required you to live in that city, which was weird. So it's you know it was remote but local remote. It was a bit strange <laughs> in that way. It ended up being good for us because it was, I don't know. It, it meant that we saw each other a lot. Literally yeah, you, every single week. You physically could connect. Did you guys do any meetings where you got physically together? Every Friday. That was the structure is that we rotated houses. There was a calendar and we had one meeting per week in person on Friday and we all got together and, uh, and did that. And it was kind of fun because we there was some structure to it because it was a little bit scrum like, you know, where you had to say what you did and what you're going to do and if you have any blockers or whatever. But also we sat around and wrote handwritten thank you cards to our users every single week oh nice oh my like god that. that's incredible yeah yeah it didn't scale very well you know you, <laughs> yeah. but uh but we did it anyway up until the very end we did that not that it's oh yeah. not that it's dead but the very end being <laughs> when we sold the, the very end <laughs> till you're very you end. heard it here wufu's gone <laughs> oh, <shit. No>. Sad <laughs> day. <laughs> no. Well, hey, no they're still around it's the same thing you just yeah, it's the same website yeah yeah they're doing great 
Since we're uh, on the subject of front end developer conference, maybe we could just jump into that about what you're going to be speaking on. Sure. Oh, man, I had no idea up until recently because I was for <laughs> years I had been, I think it was literally years I had been uh, talking about SVG because it was like I talked about it for a while and for then it was like, this is, yeah, exactly. Like I've been talking about this and blogging about this for enough time now. Let's write a book in the book writing process took forever. And then the book came out and then I was like, I should probably keep talking about it because it's a little weird to like change topic the second your book comes out you know it's like not a good look i don't think <laughs> so i kept talking about svg for a while longer and i still love that subject and can talk about it certainly but um i don't know my fire has has is is just diminished a little bit on it just because i'm like i that was a phase of my life i loved it i learned it i got what i needed out of it it's part it's now a firmly a part of my front end developer toolkit so now i can kind of shift my thinking to other and new things and what's that gonna be <sighs> no idea you know it's not like i am for lack of like knowledge and thinking about front end development because i CSS tricks is another thing I do. We blog literally every single day or multiple times a day about front end web development. I keep up pretty good on the industry and I can sit here and talk. We could literally talk for 12 hours about front end dev. There's no, no shortage of time. things, but, like, <laughs> but what Let's do, do I want to say, you know, <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll do that for some kind of anniversary. We're on air all day. Oh, that would be a pretty awesome <laughs> episode 500. You should get guys. Should yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But like you kind of got if you're going to talk at a at a conference, I feel like you should have s something rather specific to say. You know, you shouldn't just waltz up there in your pajamas and be like, "All right, who's got a question?" You know, like that's <laughs> yeah, funny. you can't call it in. Oh, no. I, th I feel like you could get away with that though, Chris. I, I feel like you could just show up in your pajamas, maybe like in pajamas with like a bathrobe on, a little pipe or something. <laughs> so oh, yeah, you, could actually, you could actually do like a session, like to uh, pen to Brian's point, like you could do like a session of just questions, like you in a chair in a bathrobe with the bubble pipe. <laughs> Go ahead, one hour, ask me. I bring a <laughs> to that. <laughs> If it was funny, sure, but you know, like in with some degree of seriousness, you can't like be. It's a little disrespectful yeah. to just be like, "I'm so cool, I don't have to do the same <laughs> prep work as everybody else." You know, it's That's like true. it's like not. Yeah. So yeah. I want to like I want to make sure that I respect the, the audience a bit and like you know think of something and anyway I, you know i'll whatever i'll think of something we can we could just talk you know i don't know the history of css or something if we had to but i kind of like latching on to some kind of subject to think about for a while and i actually i'm struggling to remember exactly how i kind of landed into this but it's nice when a topic like is both highly relevant to front end web design development which is kind of my bag mm -hmm. and 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 like you know entrepreneurially doesn't hurt either because I because the, the main thing I do is well I have my podcast and I have CSS tricks and both of those are uh, serious endeavors and part of my career my main thing is code pen you know that's the you know the thing yeah, that make it all day. that's a you know that's a whole team and we're growing and that's you know we've been around for six years and are and trying to hit our stride here is, is in creating that tool what code pen kind of represents is in a way it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, uh, this phenomenon of of static websites in a way, in that mm. you can you yeah. can you can write whatever you want, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in CodePen, and particularly with our project editor, you can even deploy that and all that stuff. But what it doesn't do is any kind of back end languages. You know, it's just it's just the front end stuff, and you just get the front end stuff. And it's become a little bit of a phenomenon. I'm sure a lot of you have. I've heard of and have played with static site generators, things like Jekyll or Hugo or Gatsby yeah. or whatever, right? So that's living in that world. There's this whole like rise and movement of like the jam stack, which is what what is it? JavaScript, APIs, and markup essentially, which is this idea of you can build a site that's just static files, but it doesn't mean that it has to like lack interactivity. You can still do fancy things with it through client side JavaScript and APIs to talk to other stuff. So it's like you get this, you get, you're combining this world of static and static websites and static hosting with dynamic stuff by means of JavaScript. And I think CodePen fits in there nicely. And it's just kind of part of this world of, static stuff that's going on and then i was like okay i'm a front-end developer so i know html css and javascript where do where does that that's powerful and that's a great job and if if all, all i ever did was that type of stuff i think 
that could be a, a career forever. But like, where, where does that skill set stop? Where do you like, where are you like, I need to, I don't know, I can't go on anymore. I need like the help of somebody else to, to do this. It sounds like you're uh, developing your, your talk right now. <laughs> kind of. It's a little yeah. bit of the, there we go. We, we help. I, we're excited. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's I got, a, I really did create this talk. I'm calling it the all powerful front end developer. And I got to give it just like a couple nights ago. So it's kind of fresh oh, in my mind, just as like a good. practice, a practice know, kind of thing. What's interesting is I really do think, I, don't, I mean, I don't know how you personally feel about it because they're kind of both your babies, but in a way I feel like um, CodePen was an evolution of CSS tricks. Like if you like, like CS trick, CSS tricks intention was for you to share. Uh, okay. Of course, correct me if I'm wrong, but my, my impression of it is to share what you're learning with CSS and with, with people around you and, and, you know, communicate with others. And, and then CodePen is kind of like, if you could take that and like amp it up and do way more and like really show people and share with people how to do things, that's kind of like how I see it anyway. I mean, how do you feel about that? Yeah, certainly that was the, the original world of it was this is you know this is a cool tool for showing off demos and we should build our own tool for that and there can be community features there too so that we can all kind of learn from each other and that was early days and but that's really still the still the the core of it you know it just so happens that you know instead of now feeling limited by what code pen can do just fortuitously <laughs> That's just where the industry's kind of headed. I mean, have you seen, you know, like think of GitHub pages. That's yeah. free. Oh, yeah. GitHub is free and everybody does that. And it's essentially static hosting and people are trying to milk that for all it's worth because it's it's a nice platform for that. And because it's just flat files, it's on their CDN and all that. And now Netlify comes along and they're like, this is just static hosting, but it hosts all your fancy build processes. And we have extra features on top of that static hosting. But because it's static, we can ship your files all out to the, you know, the edge and make them load super duper fast. And it's all super secure and it fits with your developer workflows. And I'm like, hey, CodePen's a little bit part of this story too. It's a, it's a place to do static stuff. So that's kind of where I was going is that where does that skill set of a front end developer stop? Is it it, it's starting to not have to stop so soon in that a lot of stuff that you might think of as a back end role, like where can I chuck some data to save or how can I communicate with Slack or send an email yeah. or send a text message, those type of things. You can use your front end skills to do these days thanks to things like cloud functions and this whole world of serverless, which is this big buzzword, but that I just to finish the thought, that's what my talk is going to be about is the, it's called the all, all powerful front end developer, but it's a, but generally about the, the world of quote unquote serverless. Yeah, I think I heard you guys meeting you and Dave talk about this subject quite a lot in recent episodes. Hmm. <laughs> it's going to be good. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually had a, 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 I don't, I know you have a, uh, the radio, I, I don't have the name of it. Uh, CodePen Radio? Yeah, CodePen Radio. They read. Uh, and there, I believe there's an episode about the challenges, but I'm curious where, I love that idea. It's, re, it's a really awesome idea. Where did that come from? The CodePen uh, challenges? Yeah, well, it depends. What which one are we talking about? We have CodePen Radio, which is our podcast at CodePen, which is just us talking about kind of the behind the scenes of what it's like to run CodePen business. No, the, yeah, the the challenges, the new CodePen challenges that you have every week. The like the recent yeah. one, I think, was Stargate. That's an awesome idea. Where did that come from? Yeah, CodePen challenges is is brand new. We're only in week two of it, and you know, and in, in going forth, we're gonna we're pro you know, as far as I can tell, we're gonna be doing it for quite a while. It's just gonna be, every single week there's gonna be a new challenge, and it's pretty lightweight. It's not you know you know it's not like you pay to sign up. There's no prizes or anything. It's just a a. a, a people we've learned at CodePen kind of like the idea of being prodded along a little bit to build something along a theme. Uh, yeah, I, it's, I guess it might be a little bit related to like writer's block, you know, if you like yeah. sat down to write a story, what, like, and you just put a blank piece of paper in the typewriter or a, opened up a, a blank document in your word processor or whatever, you're a little bit like, Ugh. but if somebody's like, write a story about a snail meeting a, grasshopper <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
some words might come out, you know? So it's, 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 it's no big deal. It's just like, and then if you do it, what's kind of cool is you know that other people are doing it too. So there's some kind of camaraderie and stuff that happens there. And we didn't just pull this out of our hat. There's things yeah. like the creative coding club at, that, that it was community organized at code pen that, that, that did great. And that was an evolution of another coding club that kind of self-organized on code pen. There's things like code Vember and code golf. And there's lots of things that we just thought, well, why don't we take a crack at it? Cause then we can integrate it into the site in a little more. Yeah. Integrated kind of way. Like, yeah some of the results have been, I've seen are pretty, uh, yeah, pretty awesome. So amazing star because the first, first one I think was star was Stargate. It was Stargate. Yeah. yeah and there's a, people created like ro like full 3d environments. So you can rotate and see the Stargate. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's really awesome. I hope you guys keep that up. It's a cool concept. And I like how you're, you're involved. Your involvement, I think, helps a lot. And it probably blows your mind to see that, hey, we, we put this up there and like, look at all these things people are making on, on this platform that, you know, you guys created. It must be cool. Yeah, it is cool. And, we, and from a, from a, the perspective of us trying to run it, we need to build it in such a way that we can keep it going. And it's not because we're such a small team. It's not like yeah. I can be like, you know what? I'm just going to hire somebody to run the challenges for us kind of thing. We just can't. Of course, I'd love to do that, but it's just not practical from a business perspective, you know? So we need to come up with ways where we're like, how can we do this smart? You know, how can we do this in a reusable way? How can we use the systems we already have? How can we make an easy way to build pages on the site for these challenges? How can we use our blog and social media to make sure that it's interesting and worth doing and so all that i find that just as fascinating it's not just it's not just the doing it but doing it in a kind of sustainable and uh and healthy way you know that works for our team is, is just as interesting uh kind of in that uh vein uh the code pen meetups i've seen are, are a huge thing as well they're kind of popping up all over the world even um mm -hmm. so does that kind of help your team too? kind of like a uh, see how people are using it in specific areas. Mm. It, you, you'd think it would. would <laughs> yeah, I mean, not to not to say that it's not necessarily, but uh, um, yeah, you, you like. I guess if we were smarter than we are, that could be like an incredible source of of like user research. You know, which is I, I think any app worth their salt is is probably doing a lot of. Uh, and we need to we need to do more of, but they're at the moment they're just kind of like self serve in a way in a in the in, in a way that I don't know the, the way they came about was people would write to us and say, can we please have one? Which was you know took us aback in a way like wow you know I'd, I'd love I'd love for you to do that. Are you saying you want to you know essentially do work for us for free? And I don't I don't want to frame it like that because there's benefit on both sides yeah. and they wouldn't you know, the, the, I think the expectation is clear, you know, you're not, we're not, you can do whatever you want. I hope you want to do this because you think it's fun and worth it and valuable for your community and all that stuff. But so now, you know, enough people that enough things happened over time that of course we evolved that process as well. You know, we're like, well, you know what, let's make an area on the site that's dedicated to this. Let's make a, a, a you know, some a, like a data format where it's really easy to add new meetups and help promote them to some way. Let's like partner with a, a, a uh, a company called Envite to help us so that it's really easy to make uh, RSVP pages for it so people can sign up and know where, know what's coming and communicate with e via email over about it. So it's evolved over time to become kind of a sustainable system. And then uh, we built a page that's like, do you want to throw one kind of like an informational page so that the expectations are clear of what we're asking from you as a host and what you can expect from us as a company to support your meetup. And it's great. You know, it, it like doesn't, we don't necessarily need a full time person to handle these meetups in a way. They just kind of, we have built systems so that they can kind of handle themselves. And uh, it's been, it's been tremendous. You know, there's been, there's been hundreds of them and, they, you know, they grow and shrink and move and change hands and, and all that stuff is okay because it's just it's just fun and low pressure. It has to be a good feeling to put that out there and then see it grow and become something uh, that's just independent of what you uh, intended it to be. And it's just kind of growing and being prosperous. Yeah. I mean, geez, a, what a dream life. I'd love to, if I could afford it, just get on a plane and go to every single one of them, you know, just jet center out. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. You can come to ours. 
Start a Kickstarter. A, you know, <laughs> so uh, I actually Kickstarters and Chris around the world. <laughs> Where? When is this one, Janelle? On the twenty sixth. Uh, it is at Isaiah in Winter Park, Orlando. Uh, so, but you're more than welcome to come. We'd love to have you there. Uh, Oh, that's fantastic. Is it so it's it's what is it June 26th, May 26th? Oh, no, is no, it no. Around... It's this 26th. Oh, in, in March. <laughs> yes, we do it every other month. Sorry, I'm I'm a co-organizer of a code pen meetup, so that's why I kind of just put oh. that in there. <laughs> we got to get it on the side. It's not on the side. It's it's probably our fault. Well, I, I, okay. I I hate to say it, but I still feel that that the the southeast is very neglected in the uh, code and design community compared to the rest of the world. It's pretty much San Francisco, New York, um, mm. it's Seattle, and then you know Orlando, Tampa. People are like, eh. "What are those places?" People neglect Florida sometimes. Yeah, I yeah. lived it for the last the last year. Uh, well, God, when was it? It was. I, I don't want to. Yeah, you're in Miami. You're taking you? updates. Yeah, I'd lived a year in my uh, not quite a year in Miami, but yeah, I mean that was it was it wasn't non-existent the tech thing there but it, it didn't perhaps not as robust you're right yeah so. yeah there's a the word camp down there that's pretty uh, i it's think pretty it's happening camp. right now actually yeah mm -hmm. cool so any new books on the horizon you know i, I have a great subject for a follow-up book that you might want to do <laughs> where you're getting away from practical svg and it's more towards i don't know if you heard this uh, expression before the all-powerful front-end developer, <laughs> and it's all about the serverless thing. Maybe mm -hmm. a talk could evolve into a book, and you could kind of take that around for a little bit because it's, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's very topical and super interesting. <laughs> I would recommend that to anybody who does want to write a book, especially in this industry, that it's you're better off if you're going to have more luck and success and it's going to come out a little easier if you do start with a bunch of blog posts and a bunch of just general thinking and perhaps meetup talks about it and then turn it into a big talk. I would definitely like morph all of that work into a book at some point. You'd think that my, this exact story that I'm, my talk would, would end in that way. And it's not inconceivable that it does, but I think it's unlikely to happen in this case, specifically because part of the vibe of this talk that I'm about giving isn't about my domain expertise in this stuff. It's almost about my in expertise. It's a, it's in like, this is fascinating. This is a thing that's happening right now. This is highly relevant to front end developers. This is how I'm already benefiting from it, but this is how, how little I know about it. And, and it's still of benefit to me. So, you know, I'd worry that my book would be like, you know, read about how little I know about this thing probably wouldn't fly off the shelves. You know? Well, what about uh, taking CSS tricks and doing a, a kind of a smashing magazine style thing? And uh, yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, I, if you picked the right posts, I could, you know, and to, to be to be honest, we we we've made some steps in that direction already. So I guess that's a oh. secret. Uh, oh, I'm excited! I started and. And then life happened in a way, but it, it, it it's still on my radar. And in fact, it's it's permanently on my to-do list to kind of reevaluate where we are on that. But it, I don't think it'll be as simple as, you know, just like picking some posts and like, re you know, picking a oh, nice yeah. book font for whatever. It's going to take some work, but there's never been a CSS tricks book, really. And why not? You know, I yeah, think exactly. that, you know, I, is the I launch think, is hmm? the launch still going? No, I mean, the URLs are there in a way, but I basically just wrapped it into the kind of the video screencast area of the site because the, the the situation with the lodge is that it was it was it was paid. It was like our attempt at at a membership area for the site. Yeah. Uh, and it just was it, it's not that it was a bad idea. I think in the end, it probably was just a, a, a fine idea that I eventually became steeped in guilt over because I feel like oh. if you're going to. If you're going to do something like that, I feel like you owe it to all those people that it's a very big part of what you do, that like they pay you and you provide them stuff. It's not just like they pay you and then when you feel like it, you 
pop over there once in a while and maybe do something. I feel like if I it just and, and maybe that's just me or whatever, but just to have somebody paying you month to month, uh, which is how we structured it for for some stuff there, and of which we had no like published timeline of what was coming and not a mm. strong track record of delivering new courses. That I just was like, you know what? Let's wind this thing down, and I'm just going to make it free for everybody. Uh, and that's what we did. And that was years and years and years ago at this point. So it, it was it was cool, and it's not like that content disappeared. It's just now free for everybody. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember some really nice uh, content there, like the, your word, your WordPress stuff. I mean, going step by step, building, building a, a whole theme and everything. It, it was yeah, good stuff. And I'm sad that to see go, but, doesn't last, but it doesn't last forever, right? Uh, building yeah. a WordPress theme is great, but but th- yeah. four years later, how, uh, is that yeah. is it good content anymore? <laughs> Where's the information about Gutenberg? <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is there any kind of, um, I don't know, little valuable uh, snippets that you could provide us uh, in your talk that, you know, like, uh, hey, uh, you know, you have to come to see it, but here's a little, here's a little something. Uh, yeah, I think we could probably cover something like that. You know, one of the, the ways that I was exposed to some of this like power of serverless kind of stuff was when I first saw this app called, um, webtask.io and i have no affiliation with for them they've never given me a dime this is not a sponsor thing or whatever but it's a little bit like um uh code pen is a you know an editor in the browser webtask has an editor as well and it but it's it's designed really nicely as a way to write a serverless function so you go in there and it gives you this little framework for a javascript function uh but, but th- that function is designed to be hit by URL. So this function at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the URL. They just give you a URL. It's like you want to run this function, hit this URL with, you know, with Ajax or whatever, you know. Uh <clears throat> and and so cool. It's node. You're writing some node code in there. You can console.log stuff to make sure it's doing what you think it's going to be doing. You can fake data to hit it so you can, you know, you can develop your little function in there. What would a function like that do, you know? Like what's what's the point of all this? Well, think if you were designing like uh, a recipe website, you know, like you know, this is how you make my favorite kind of cupcakes or whatever. That's just, that's where you work. You work somebody that, that on a recipe style website and you're on a sprint to design a feature to um, send a text message you know, for any recipe, you're looking at the recipe and there's a little box somewhere that's like, just type in your phone number and we'll send you this recipe all nicely formatted as a text message, just a feature. That's like one of those moments where as a front end developer, you might be like, I can't, I don't know how to do that. That's not my bag. I need somebody, I need like a back end developer or somebody else to do this for me. Not necessarily true. This is where something like web task comes into play. There, and there's services out there like Twilio, maybe people have heard of, which is this way to send a text message for like less than a penny. You sign up for it and they give you, uh, you know, they have API, uh, API access and API keys to send these text messages. And it's really easy. It's just like 15 lines of code. You know, it's just like fire up a new Twilio client and then you need a from phone number and a to phone number and the message content for the text message you want to send and that type of thing. But you can't do this through client side JavaScript. It's not, ex- you can't do it that way because you're, you'd be exposing your API keys and that's very bad news. You know, bad guys will steal them and do bad things. So you need to do this through backend code. But like, do you want to like fire up a whole server and, you know, write a PHP function to do all this or whatever? You, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. You can come to web task. You can copy and paste the code out of the Twilio API docs, paste it into a web task function, change the values to whatever you need it to do for your Twilio account. And now you have like a recipe website that can just hit this serverless function in which to send recipes. You've totally done this all by yourself as a front end web developer. You didn't need to reach for any different type of skill set. You just, you did it all yourself. You know, that's the, the kind of power extension of this serverless stuff. You're just writing JavaScript, but you get server side powers as well. So that, that type of thing is going to be in the talk. Um, now I'm excited. That's super cool. <laughs> ah! <laughs> 
Well, we're really excited to hear your talk. That's going to be super exciting. Thank but you. I kind of wanted, yeah, of course. I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about like how you get the inspiration to even do things like this, to talk about, you know, being a superhero front end developer, right? <laughs> the inspiration from it is it's, it's tricky. Cause I get, I, I live a, 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 a privileged life in a way. And that I get people like emailing me stuff. You should check this out, Chris. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> I run CSS tricks for a while, I get people submitting interesting articles to me and I make it kind of my job to stay on top of that stuff. So I, you know, I still read RSS feeds and I subscribe to about 700 newsletters, you know, and I, I have wow. a thousand tabs open all day long where I'm kind <laughs> of like, you know, and I even kind of rearrange the tabs like, oh, this is related to this in an interesting way. And this is related to this. I, I feel like I <laughs> kind of keep a bead on the in industry, uh, or at least I try to in a way. And then it, and then I feel like it's not hard to kind of fill in the gaps or being like, you know, they, they did a pretty good job of explaining this story, but I'm going to explain it in my own way. That's kind of a secret to blogging. I feel like that not everybody fully realizes that that happens in every other industry. Okay. Sometimes you, you fire up a podcast and you listen to this great podcast. And at the end you're like, Oh, and thanks to uh, Suzanne Schmidt over at the Atlantic, who we totally stole the story from, you know, you're like, no, they just did a podcast of which the in which they totally ripped off the story from. They did a good job. I shouldn't say rip off because they did a good job of re-reporting the story and interviewing people and putting good tape together and stuff. But it's not rare to have somebody else, do a story on something and then have you pick it up and do your whole spin on it. So if I read a great post about React and GraphQL or something, there's no reason I can't also look at that, play with it myself and write my own blog post that's about that same exact subject. I can credit them. I can make different demos or whatever, but I feel like it's not just be like, well, somebody else wrote about that. So it's gone forever. Like yeah, so blogging in some way. Can, yeah. Yeah, it's, and people too, they want to hear from different uh, perspectives and get different perspectives Absolutely. on these points. So you might say something, Scott Talinsky might say something, but I, I want to hear what each of you have to say on it, your own spin. And it's you also internalize it differently and will come up with possibly different points. Or might be confused, even better, you might be confused at a certain spot that they weren't, that you could be like, hey, you know, this is, they glossed over this part, but this was pretty important. You know? Well, it's like steal like an artist, you know, you, you're not, you you're, you're taking something and you're, you're giving, I mean, like you said, you're giving it another spin. What, while some people may uh, read or hear or listen, watch, whatever the, the original version, you may give it a spin that makes uh, a different person understand it better. So it's, I think it's definitely beneficial. Speaking of finding your inspiration, I wanted to know, um, and I don't know if anybody's ever asked you this kind of question, but do you you have a certain level of success? And I, I've seen a, a few different videos from you, and I, I watched one the other day. I think it was from Treehouse, and uh, they were talking about uh, your. How, I think at the time you were living in Milwaukee, and I, I want to ask you a few questions about where you're living at right now, but. Do you ever find like you have to achieve a certain level of success within your career uh, at a certain point? Like, you know, by the time I'm this age, I want to accomplish this, that, or the other thing. Sure. And what, what the, what might those things be? <laughs> and like, like, you know, by the time you were 50, <laughs> what do you want to accomplish? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope that, you know, I feel like I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for, for a chance to step away from like, like hardcore day-to-day -day development work. Like I, I, sure. to some degree, maybe I, it gives, I, I hope that it, I can retain some of my street cred because I do do that. So I like feel like I'm at, in the thick of it with the with the rest of the world a little bit. Like what if I have a a problem with CSS? It's not some theoretical I just read about it kind of thing. It's now it's because I encountered it for real life yesterday while I was developing a thing. But at the same time, it's been long enough, and I and I <laughs> I I'm hoping to through these projects start to achieve a level of success in which that I can step back a little bit and get some more human beings behind it and grow the pile a little bit. So I can just be like, 
hi, you know. Yeah, maybe uh, you could be the person that's raising the next yeah. foyer, and you're the guy in the background, like the you know the evangelist or the the person that represents this. Sure, and if it costs me some street cred, it's just gonna have to be the deal at this point because I don't know. You, you, know, know I you can't always be in the crunch, right? You can't always kind of have that feeling of I see. You can't always be that individual contributor. You have to, at some point, you're going to have to be more um, administrative, more the person behind the scenes. You're going to be the man behind the man behind the man, but you're going to be the figure. Yeah, and I think a a healthy business is at that point. When when you, you, you need to start being outnumbered a little bit by by the by the by people and i just i just want that opportunity i've never had i've never I've like a, a, a kind of a, a manager now but it's more like a co-founder and there's just a, such a small group of employees that it's just it doesn't have as much formal structure as i'd like and i'm just trying as hard as i can to to, to grow this thing up to to a point where there literally is at least like more humans and defined teams and and if that happens by the time i'm 50 that's great yeah Nice. Slow burn. Yeah, that's de- definitely nothing. So what nothing. you're saying is you want to... Oh. Oh. Hmm? Go for it, Brian. You, I'm sorry. You do it. You do it. You, 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 all you. Uh, I just wanted to uh, make sure that I'm understanding you right, Chris. Um, so you, you want to essentially be a developer advocate from uh, kind of going forward uh, one day? Maybe. I'm not sure if I if I love that. I don't I don't mind that term necessarily, but... but uh, but but even an internal manager or a project manager, a product owner or something like like for CodePen, you know, not just for anywhere. I'd, I'd like to be kind of like a evangelist is fine, but I'd like to kind of oversee the whole ship and not just be like, oh, no, the CSS is on fire over here or something, you know, like or 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 I need a six hour block today to, to work on this feature. I'd like to step up a little higher than that. And I wish the same thing for my for my co-founders. You know, I know I think we all kind of dream of. Of, of of running a larger ship and and being kind of a lead of a a team or, or or overarching thing rather than you know ten hours of JavaScript in a day. Yeah, you feel like you want to still be able to sit down in the chair and type it out, but you want to be in the back, kind of observing the ship, and there's going to be somebody physically on the wheel. Sure, and I can help them and support them in that role and train up junior devs and that kind of stuff that that, uh, that comes with that territory. And this is kind of an incomplete thought. I'm not. This isn't like. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't dream about this every. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There could be something <laughs> where at a point uh, where it's like a uh, you're 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 kind of a, a Linda c- character, if you will. You know, where <laughs> it's where it, and just go with me on this thought for a second. Okay. But. <laughs> I'm not comparing you to Linda, but like, you know, you go to CodePen to get certifications or you, you know, it's a, it's also a place to learn things, not so much as a LMS kind of feel, but, but, you know, you, you go there for, I want to level up my skills on something like this. That, I mean, th- that could be a possible thing too. And maybe that goes down the avenue when you're talking about creating these books as well. I hope so. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd just settle for a ride on Linda's yacht. That would be fine. <laughs> now, now I wonder though. I mean, you, you. I mean, this is just a thought that you had. But how do you feel about actually when you do did that? Being tempted to like, oh, you see something, you see CSS that's just wrong, and and someone else did it, and you're like, I could, I could just go in there. I could, I could just fix uh, it. Like, uh, how, like, do you do you think you could like distance yourself, or do you think it'd be hard? <laughs> Well, that's a fascinating question, you know. I don't know because you'd you'd worry. My worry wouldn't be that like if I let this go, that I'm harming the product. My worry would be yeah. like if I don't let this go, am I like, you know, grandpa nitpicky in that I almost <laughs> like lose credibility because there's just like okay, we'll get right out. Here that, comes old man Corey on his wheel. <laughs> Why don't you lay that out with tables, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> oh Tables worked before and then that is they work again. Shut up, you kids. <laughs> Somebody get me my teeth. I'm gonna bite yeah. you for that one. You'd better be really r- correct if you're gonna do that. You better roll <laughs> in with like a soft touch and be just be like, hey, I noticed we're doing thing this way. Could you explain to me why this is what I see when I see that? It looks like trouble I've run across in the past, and this is the 
what I, you know, what I think would improve it and avoid that trouble, but prove me wrong if you want to kind of thing. I think there's a way to handle situations like that, that, that isn't just like, I'm going to overwrite your commit with a better version of <laughs> yeah, it's not just there about you know, knowing that certain it. technology. It's, it's about that, you know, the process to come to a certain kind of solution, right? Sure. Sure. There totally needs to be a grandpa nitpicky pin now. Like that needs to be a thing. <laughs> uh, grandpa Coyer. Grandpa Coyer. You're going to come get my teeth. I'm going to bite you. That could be a great picture. <laughs> I just think of like classic tech industry jokes of when, you know, they invite Zuck to come down and like write two lines of code and let him commit a little file to Facebook <laughs> still. You know. That's fine. Like, I, I, I wonder if he actually does do any actual code there anymore. Oh, I'm quite sure he doesn't. Yeah, probably I mean, not. I, yeah, that, one day that'll be you. People will be like, I wonder if Chris ever actually does any code for CodePen anymore. <laughs> right that now, that feels <laughs> sad, but if I was, if I was. <laughs> If I was as rich as Linda, I think I could get over it. You know, yeah, dude, I'll... you want to be on your yacht popping <laughs> bottles all day. Yeah, and you'll be creating videos about your automated house and how it's you, not you even know. that. But don't you feel like God? You, you work and work and work. I've been I've been rocking my baby to sleep at night too. Oh, uh, yeah, to that yeah. to that to that to that Ernie. Or what is it, Tennessee Ernie Ford song? You live sixteen times. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, That's another awesome. day yeah. older, and I'm just like, all oh, right, man. It's time. So where's, baby? where's the rewards? Yep, four months old. Really oh, congratulations. Hard. That's great. Is Thank this your you. first? It's my first, yes. Oh, that's great, man. Congratulations. Yeah. I got a <laughs> three year old. Uh Brian has a twelve year old, right, Brian? Uh yeah, this year, yeah. Yeah, he has that. So yeah, we know the kids. Yeah, those oh man, four months. That's a that's a tough one. How are you sleeping? <laughs> Well, my my wife is just incredible, and so in in does you know that's when when Ruby wakes up at night, there's there's pretty much one thing that she needs, and it's not dad, you know. Yeah. Is there a pillow behind you? Then that sound booth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I sleep great, fortunately, because she let she lets me do that. So my my time is will be will be coming soon, where where I'll, I can actually be useful at, at nighttime, and then my sleep will will go downhill, but. I, the, I can't wait to step in for her because she. Oh you know. yeah. Does that actually block the uh, the baby's uh, noise? Is that good enough? Is that song <laughs> with? Oh yeah. Do, do you mind if we talk about on, yeah. on, on on the air your room what, where you're standing in? Yeah. I'm sure people are very interested in this in this environment. It's a uh, it's a company out of Bend, Oregon. Here, uh, I think they moved to Redmond, Oregon, which is just down the street or whatever. But not an ad or whatever. We just paid full price for this thing. It's called. It's from a company called VocalBooth.com. Who uh, they sh they sh it, you know doesn't it look of it's about as fancy of a recording booth as 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 they come. But you'd be surprised. They come modularly. You know, they're these panels, and you kind of stitch them together and throw a few screws in it and and have this thing so that it's not like i i hand glued these eggshell carding on the wall or anything it's uh it just kind of comes like that as a as a component I mean, it probably takes about an hour hour and a half to to put together we've done it a number of times now because we had to we had to move it but this is in a booth in an office in downtown bend oregon so i'm not even at home you know we have a the baby oh, has, the, has yeah. one of you had that in your house. Gotcha. Okay. No, this is at this is at the offices of, of CodePen. And we share this office with uh Craft CMS as well. So it's Craft CMS and, and CodePen. That's cool. Do you record the podcast there as well in that nice quiet room, or are you doing that at home? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we do it. It's all happens here. CodePen radio and shop talk in here. And I think eventually maybe Craft is gonna do it too, because we uh, we split the cost on it to some degree. So thanks, Craft. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty nice. Are you are, are you happy now with your microphone? I remember you were having some uh, back and forths about uh, setting it up and all that. Yeah, a little bit. I you know I think I I published my you know the gear that I ended up buying because at some point I was I think I used the Rode Podcaster for a hundred years. Is that a Blue Yeti too? I've seen I have one of those sitting around somewhere too. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, sensitive it is. Oh, it's <laughs> yeah. so sensitive. Yeah, we all have those. Yeah, I, I love oh. it. I mean, I could get something. I I, I had a, a a friend of mine runs an uh, audio studio, and they tried to sell me theirs for like a really good price. But I really like this. I don't see any point in change it yet. 
No, I mean, it looks like you have yeah. them set up correctly too. I've definitely seen people that that don't, and it's uh, it's it's not good. You, know, you got to kind of know what you're doing a little bit. But I, you know, I reached out to our podcast, Chris Ends, our podcast editing dude, who's also kind of an audiophile and knows all about this equipment and stuff, and hooked me up with. So I figured, oh my god, it's been so long on Chop Talk Show. It's time to grow up a little bit and have some have some proper gear so i you know we ended up spent i spent you know less than a thousand which is still a whole bunch of money of course but is uh not you know as far as incredible audio equipment goes you can get you can get a lot higher than that certainly so, but most of the money is in this microphone in front of me which is a sure sm or sm sm7b which is some kind of famous microphone for, for whatever it's just <laughs> Uh, and it's kind of mounted to the ceiling on a ceiling boom. And then it goes into this thing like the DBX 286S, which is a fascinating little device. That's the kind of, it's just a $99 little rack item thing, but it does all kinds of fancy pre pre audio stuff to the, to the feed. And then it goes into the preamp and that goes into the computer. So all of that for about a, a about a grand. And I think it sounds pretty darn good. Yeah, it sounds great. It always sounds really good. It's, uh, you know, I mean, you're going to be doing this for a while. It's It was time to make the investment, as you said, right? Yeah, it's beauty. It's a sunk cost, you know, or I don't know if uh, if that's the right term for it or whatever, but this will literally last forever. I had that Rode Podcaster mic from the beginning of Shop Talk Show. I've had it. I had the thing for like five, six years, you know, the, for for some beautiful reason, audio equipment tends to last, which is great. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're getting to the end of the show, so um, we're going to jump into a few different kinds of questions, and we'll uh, we'll start closing out, if you don't mind. And Brian is going to start us off with his spotlight. Yep. Uh, my question, uh, you probably remember it I, from the last time. I think I had the same question the last time you were here. But it's something you've discovered. It could be absolutely anything. It doesn't have to be tech. It could be uh, – I always use the example of Alton Brown's meatloaf recipe because uh -huh. I love Alton Brown's meatloaf recipe. Um <laughs> Mine is actually uh, Northbooks. I've actually, I believe, I talked about this one on the show before, and I'm showing a, a, a notebook journal, uh, a grid, dot grid one on the screen for our audio listeners. And this is a, a, a new one I found. Um, it has terrible pages. And the reason I got it is I'm going to try and do the whole, uh, I did it before, the bullet journal uh, thing. kind of want to try and actually do it and stick to it. Because I think it's a, it's a good way to center yourself and kind of keep your goals in mind. And uh, so that's my pick. Uh, North Books and Avalink, they're actually really good price. They're way cheaper than Moleskin. They're made in the U.S. They use recycled paper. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Next, Frederick. Uh, yeah, so mine will be a podcast that I've been listening to quite a lot lately. It's called Sad Boys. And it's this <laughs> podcast out of California, and it's uh, these two guys talking about emotions and feelings and just being vulnerable and being honest with yourself. And it's it's a really um, interesting podcast, and it's interesting in the way that it, they're not kind of putting themselves behind the traditional like cardboard tank of I'm a professional and I'm not going to talk about these things, but they actually talk about stuff. And uh, this latest episode that uh, I just – was listening to you know, yesterday in the car was all about bullies and their high school bullies and uh, bullies in elementary school. And it was a really cool show. We'll put a link to that in the show notes. I suggest it to everyone. It's uh, my favorite. And he does. Right now. He, he does. He, I do. Day, talk about it all the time. Every day. <laughs> like I, I show up to work and he's like, Hey, guess what sad boys talked about? <laughs> yeah, I got to do. <laughs> Have you listened to crying yet? <laughs> <laughs> I love and I love too what they call their fans. Their fans are emer emotional perverts. <laughs> oh, Funny. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, um, it's a gr great show. Janelle? My turn. Um, so mine is actually Gitify, uh, which I just discovered uh the beginning of this week. Um, it's a really fun nifty tool or extension that um, I can see all of the updates that are happening on uh, GitHub from my team's project. Um, that way I don't have to go immediately into the PR tab in GitHub and try to figure out whose PRs I need to review. I can just get a notification that says, hey, there's a new thing up. You should probably PR that, like, or, um, you know, code review that. What's a PR? So it's pretty nice. Uh, a, a pull request? Sorry. 
So it's like a new thing, like, hey, pull this or uh, so it's really awesome. That way, like I get to know, like, hey, this has been, uh, you know, updated. So you should probably pull. Um, also, if somebody has uh, new, fun, cool changes, mm-hmm. I get to code review. So it's pretty awesome. Cool. All right, Chris, yeah. what you got? Um, here at the office, I wish I could almost show you because it's just behind me and to my left we have a, there's just a lot of wall space in here that we've been trying to fill up as we have moved into this office, you know, like we should get some paintings or I don't know what do adults put on the wall, you know, so if <laughs> uh, I had this idea to, <laughs> um, we have a, there's a URL on CodePen called CodePen.io slash TV. And that we made it a long time ago with the idea of like maybe we should make a screensaver or something, but it's really simple. It just is all of the pick pens ever on Code Pen uh, randomized for ten seconds. So you see one, and then at ten seconds later, it moves to oh, another one. Cool. The full screen experience. So Love there's that. nothing to it, you know. For I didn't from even our know perspective, that existed. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, you can also do it your own. So if you there's co- there's things like collections on Code Pen where you control what goes into a collection. If you go slash TV slash and then the slug of that collection, you can make this just just ones that you you picked out, you know, which is kind of cool. So I thought, you know, what a perfect thing for our code pen offices. So we bought a TV, which if you guys haven't looked at the price of TVs recently, my God, you can get incredible TVs yeah. for like a few hundred dollars. Uh, so we put a bit one on the wall and then we put behind it a because, uh, you, you know, TVs don't they usually just don't have or if they do have, it's really bad a web browser on them, you know. Uh, so how how do we get the web, you know, like just a permanent browser sitting on the TV for CodePen TV? We used one of these Intel compute sticks, which is just like Windows on a USB oh, okay. stick. And it has instead of it being USB, it's HDMI, you know, you just dunk it in the HDMI port and you have Windows going. So you, then you buy like one of those like Logitech keyboard slash, you know, My mouse camera. things. And yeah, now we have just like Windows running on it and it runs great, it runs fine. It's not like loaded with RAM. So some of the like super intense pens like are a little chuggy, but it's it's better than you think it's going to be, you know? So now we have this like sub $1,000 giant TV on the wall that's permanently displaying code pen TV, which is just kind of perfect thing, I think, for the... For, for the office is pretty cool. Yeah, that's really awesome. I yeah. mounted an Apple TV behind it too, because then like if you're having a meeting or something, people can just airplay nice. to it, you know? So it's like, dang, this is like, we're moving up in the world over here. This is cool. Yeah, tech is tech is amazing. I, I'm, I'm curious, since you mentioned Windows, it made me think about it. Have you uh, debated doing the, uh, you know, Dave goes Windows for yourself? <laughs> Absolutely not. I have no, no okay. In I'm just <laughs> I'm curious, yeah. Just curious if it tempted you, like talking to him at all. If there's anything there, like, oh, that's kind of cool because there's some interesting things coming to. Uh, Dave has you know, both. Like he's yeah. both more open-minded than me in general, and more like feel like has opinions about the kind of the tech, like specifically technological monoculture. Like maybe it's a problem that every developer ever only uses Mac, and it's not good for the ecosystem of the world and stuff. I, there's some points to be made there for sure, but I feel like most of the world is still on Windows. I don't think it's quite ex- exactly particularly dire, but all uh, we you know can't forget. And you know this is no like you know Dave knows this like. Dave makes a lot of money from Microsoft. That's like his, his Mike Paravel does work for Microsoft. It behooves him in a way to be familiar with their products, you know? Yeah. Uh, if the, if Microsoft wanted to give me a whole bunch of money, <laughs> I, I, would, I would absolutely consider it. Open invitation, Microsoft. <laughs> but like, yeah. I, I'm happy. I've been a, I was a little kid on Max. I've never turned my back on Max. I have a life history of it. I oh, love it. Gotcha. It's my job. To, and so does all of our team. You know, so if I was going to switch, yeah. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to be the guy that's that's going to, you know, be struggling to adapt to this new system kind of. I just don't, I don't know that it's appropriate to do that at the kind this, of at, at the top of a small organization, you know, like bring your own IT problems. Work here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you already have enough going on. All righty. So, Chris, this is a brand new segment of our podcast. It's called Rapid Fire. And it we're not stealing it from you, by the way. Uh, <laughs> it's we not are your not. Rapid Fire, uh, which you, he doesn't yes. use anymore. Yeah. 
Uh, but uh, what we essentially do is we ask you random questions. Some of them related to the podcast. Some of them are just completely random. Um, and you just answer them uh, as quickly as you can. Sound okay. good? Yep. All Stop right. Watch. We're going to start Click. with Brian. Go. Wait, what? I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> That's okay. I'll, I'll go. Chris, what was your favorite cartoon growing up as a kid? Mine was He-Man. Yours was? Oh, Rescue Rangers? Janelle. Chris, are you an introvert or an extrovert? Introvert. But it's complicated. That's good. <laughs> okay, Brian, Brian, we're going like this. Your turn. <laughs> I, I, I'm not prepared for this. So I'm just okay, keep just me and Janelle. Chris, why did you move to uh, Oregon? <laughs> why did you leave Wisconsin? I think Bend, Oregon is extraordinarily beautiful. And one of my best friends and co-founders, Tim Sabat, lives here. Hmm. Huh. And Camden. You had to pick. Oh. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> if you had to pick any language to uh, code in forever, which one would you do? <gasps> That's terrible. I'm going to pick Go just because I don't even know it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'm switching to Go. That's random. <laughs> what are your three favorite podcasts to listen to right now, excluding your own? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's rough. It is. Uh, they don't have um, to be your all-time favorite. Just some of your favorite three. Give me. Uh, let me rephrase that to be more political. Like, excuse me. I apologize. What are your three? Some of your three favorite podcasts. I like the big ones. You know that I the the can't miss ones to me are the ones that everybody listens to, like This American Life and Reply All and Planet uh, Money. And got it. Not interested in that. Sorry. Excuse me. I, I'm. Oh, what are your three favorite ones that people might not know about? <laughs> Oh, you know, it's, it's, I'm just asking like something like, oh, you know what? I, I like this and it's really interesting. Maybe I didn't hear about it. Uh, have you heard of Imaginary Worlds? That's nope. a good one. That's mine. What? One. That's pretty good. I like that. Oh, would you rather eat cake or pie? Oh, pie. That's, a, that's an easy one. Jeez. Kind of <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of a cake guy. <laughs> any any uh, future plans possibly <laughs> for a TV show with you and Dave in the future? Like taking <laughs> Shop Doc show off of radio and doing like a, uh, a video <laughs> thing? Yeah. Uh, is there any possibility? Let's go with yes. Ah, okay. That's possibly telling. I don't know. <laughs> On Netflix. <laughs> coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, hey, we are. I guess that's uh, anybody else have any more rapid fire Chris, for Chris? We're uh, we're running out of time. More. Okay, go Just ahead. One more. What is your all time favorite code pen? Pen. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh my gosh. <laughs> See that? I feel like that one's unfair. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. You know, there's some classics like the. I remember one of the most one of the ones I was so struck by were in the really really early days was this one that was like this grid of letters and it would light up different letters to spell what time o'clock it was. It was really what? cool. And then there was a there was a a real life version of it made. I think it was. I think the pen was probably made after the real life thing in retrospect. But I ended up buying it for my house. So and it's cool. It's still one of the cooler things in my house is this clock that like spells out what time it is with letters it's really it's it's hard to explain but it's pretty cool and then of course i'm partial to terrible cloth that was like a really fancy one code been for a long oh, time yeah, I gerard butler stuff tiffany rayside stuff yeah. oh my god um the, you know david korshid's the, the 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 adorable huskies amazing chill the lion is one of my favorites oh my god i could go on forever <laughs> Yeah, th there's a lot. All right. Well, hey, Chris, uh, since we're just about at the end, do you have any final words, any parting advice for our audience? Anything we didn't uh, talk about? <laughs> keep on keeping on, everybody. Persistence is the only thing that's ever worked for me. That's the advice <laughs> I always give. Perfect. Great. And uh, obviously, if anybody wants to get a hold of you or learn more about Chris, there's chriscourier.net, there's CodePen, there's Shop Talk Show. We could go on and on, but I'm sure if you're uh, unless you're living under a rock, you don't know about Chris. So, and uh, if you're going to be in the St. Pete, Florida location in uh, what is it, Brian? April twenty. Let me open up my phone here. April twenty fifth through the twenty seventh. There's uh, going to be the front end developer conference. As we said, it's going to be the tenth year anniversary, and oh, we're yeah. giving away a free ticket. So just tweet us, mention us, and tell us you want the ticket. And we're giving it away live on the show. And Chris's talk is going to be about uh, the power of front, the power of the front end developer, the 
all powerful front end, end developer, Ooh. excuse me. And it's all about uh, without a server and all the uh, cool little things we could do with that. Yes, and we will be there, by the way. So uh, if you win the ticket, uh, you will be able to, you know, hang out with us, maybe. Come say Give hi. Give us a high five. Brian will yeah. uh, sign your hat. It's going to be awesome. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. All right, Chris. Well, hey, man, thank you so much. Really appreciate you coming on. Oh, and um, congratulations again on uh, your daughter. That's awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me on, gang. I really appreciate yeah. it. I'm going to scoot. All right. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it.